Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the research writing. Uh, today we will discuss about what is the nature inspired algorithm and its application. What is the brief content? We will cover that. We will see what is the overview and the importance of the AI. What are the limitations of the exact methods? How they can discretize into the heuristic, hyper heuristic and so on. And we will see about the three main direction which will help you for the future research. And finally, we will classify this basic a nature inspired algorithm I abbreviated as NIA. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics Thapar Institute. You can simply follow this link for finding the various videos on that. So what is the overview on this uh, nature inspired algorithm is that it is a field of the uh, in the field of the artificial intelligence there are large number of the nature inspired <laughs> algorithms. What we can do is whenever there is a large number of the applications are there one of the most specialized area in the artificial intelligence is of computational intelligence abbreviated as CI and what is the importance of that is the main objective is to develop the inexact solutions for the NP complete problem what is the NP's non polynomials are there that is where there is not exact solutions that run in polynomial time if I explain you with the help of the example what I can say is if I say this is my city and these are my places are there so say there are the uh, number of the places are there so I just consider as of 20 places so your target is to reach start from here and you can come back to at each at this point again by uh, by traveling one city at only one time that is a problem of the traveling salesman so what you can do you can start firstly from here to here either you can go from this side or from this or from this or from this and so on so for this one how many cases how many choices are there and minus one Similarly for the second and so on. So since I consider here as a 20, so 20 is a very small number. It may be that you can consider as of the 100. So this problem seems to be very simple because there are only 20 cities. But if you consider as of the 120 cities and so on. So that's a very big problem. So when you are trying to search for the possible solution, you can start from here and then go on. So there are possibly n factorial choices are you. So once you are n factorial, if you have seen the n is my 20 so this is you can say 10 raised to power 18 possible tools are there so it is a very difficult if not impossible that it's a very difficult to find the route which will give you the shortest path so what is the reason behind that so this main challenges of such non polynomial hard problem is the exponential growth of this here all of us knows that if you draw the graph of the exponential function this is here and if you draw the uh, n factorial, you can see that it will be like of here. You can see this is my n factorial. This is e raised to power x. The growth of the n factorial is always be uh, more than of the exponential. So what is the meaning of that? Whenever you will increase the value of the n, the complexity increases. On the other hand, there are the several exact methods are there which are effective for solving this. But when whenever there is exponential growth, that's a that's a uh, exact methods are suitable with the polynomial time but as we know that in our real world problem there is always be the continuous variable so it means the searching space is always be the indefinite so whenever is there the size will increases so this will as more than of this x raised power n form so this will increase the difficulty of the problem and subsequently the exact method to solve them how we can overcome that so for that also the exponentially growing problems either they are of the discrete kind or the continuous problem there is no exact solution for that because whenever there is a large number whenever the variables are increases you are unable to find the best possible solution so in order to overcome this the computational intelligence or the soft computing techniques are useful how we can discretize that this is basically discretized into the three portion one is a fuzzy logic Second is the neural network and third is the evolutionary computation also called as the nature inspired algorithms. This nature inspired algorithms are or evolutionary computation is again discretized into here you can see the computation intelligence or soft computing are basically divided into three categories fuzzy logic machine learning machine learning is also called as the neural network side and the evolutionary computation. This evolutionary computation is again discretized into the three portion one is the evolutionary algorithms swarm intelligence and the meta heuristic techniques in order to solve any of the problem we know that there are the two methods are there one is known as the exact method second is the approximate methods this approximate method is called as the computational intelligence and soft computing 
exact method we all know that there are the lagrange multiplier kkd conditions steepest descent and all are there but this these methods are very limiting in use why because all these method you require the gradient of them also such problems may fail to solve the several problems when it has the dimension are increases also it contains the multiple local optimals are there so it is very difficult there why because of the high non linearity functions this is due to the non convexity are there the uh, functions may have the non continuity or the non differentiability are there or whenever there is on the large scale that is whenever the size of the problem is very large so it is very difficult to handle with the steepest descent uh, kkd condition any of the constraints are there so these exact methods are very limiting in use also there are many set of the constraints are there and many contradictory objectives are there means maybe that you have to maximize the one function f in the same time you want to minimize the function g so they are of the contradictory objectives are there so apart from this there are the exact method may also suffer the deficiency because it the problem may have the continuous discrete binary or the integer problem in the same same uh, same mathematical model so in order to handle this we need some approximate methods or you can say the exact methods there is a need of the full uh, calculation or the full enumeration which is not possible to find the best possible solution whenever n is my large that is it is very difficult or it's very impossible to find the problems of the real life like traveling salesman next pair quadratic assignment problems and so on in order to handle this we are working on the uh, in exact method or approximate method or you can also say that exact methods are guaranteed to obtain the optimal solution provided your problem is classified as the np hard problem that is the complexity of the algorithm is order of the polynomials are there and uh, that is there is no polynomial time exists to perform the total uh, calculations are there because as the size of the problem increases the time will also be increasing there exponentially which will help to increase their computational time so as a result the most of the accurate method will be, uh, in a shorter time periods are constraints and constraints are very difficult so to handle this there is a need of this meta heuristic techniques are there all these facts are in caris which are helpful for defining this meta heuristic techniques to solve this challenging problems what is the meta heuristic techniques are there this is a new kind of the approximate algorithm remember that this is approx these are not providing the exact solution so a new kind of the approximate algorithm which are used at called as the meta heuristic techniques they are widely used why because they are first of all these are simplicity they have easy to implementations they are avoiding the local optimal that's the most important and most thing is it is there is no need to use the derivatives that is there is no need to calculate the gradient of this of any objective functions the two major characteristics of the meta heuristics are exploration and the exploitation what is the meaning of that exploration means they are ability to discover the new searching area so it means if you are searching in this area so if you are striking here what is the possibility of getting a new optimal solution or the new searching area that is the purpose of the exploration while the exploitation as the meaning of the exploit they will focus on finding the new solution that is a co most compromising solution and the purpose of this meta heuristic is that we can balance the meta heuristic uh, balance the exploration and the exploitation that's the major uh, uh, purpose of this meta heuristic the use of this meta heuristic has gained many uh, uh, more attention in the last 3 decades so why because uh, approximate method the target is to find this satisfactory solution in the reasonable time so our target is to get the near to the optimal solution but also the time should be the minimized so this meta heuristics are basically divided into three category one is the heuristic hyper heuristics and the meta are there what is the difference between them is heuristic as the name suggests is that it is the algorithm it is an approach to solve the problem that is not guaranteed to be the optimal so like of the heuristic approach so whenever you are talking about the heuristic there is no guarantee about the optimal however the hyper heuristic are the heuristic to choose this means if you have the heuristic one this is the first algorithm this is the second algorithm this is the third and many more are there so they all are my heuristic algorithms are there how you can choose this which one is the best one to solve the optimal solution so that is called as the hyper heuristic that is are the heuristic to choose the heuristics are there or you can say this is 
considered as the high level strategy that can manage the low level heuristics and their work. Either you can select the heuristic from the available one or you can generate the new heuristic. How you can generate the new heuristic that we can, uh, uh, we can discuss in the next slide. And once you can find these uh, uh, best so heuristic, then you can apply and generate their new solutions. The hyper heuristic operates in the searching space of the heuristic selecting and apply the either as a single or the combination of the low level heuristics. The fundamental difference between the heuristic and the meta heuristic is that later one is operates only over the searching space, two of the solutions under the consideration. Or you can say that hyper heuristic searching for the good heuristic while the meta heuristics are searching for the good solution. So you can see that hyper is searching for the heuristic that is a which algorithm you can use while the meta heuristic are used for finding the solution. There is a difference between the solution and the heuristic. The motivation of the hyper heuristic comes from the fact that the performance of the different heuristics may vary depending upon the problem to problem. So if you have some problem like minimization of the F are there, it may be that if you apply the heuristic one, you will get the optimal solution near to the optimal solution. Second, you can apply and then so on. But none of them will be the optimal are there. Many individual heuristic may be effective at the certain stage of the searching space are there. For example, whenever exploration is more important than of the exploitation. So while performing is there. So therefore, it is a fear to expect the several heuristic applied in the appropriate manner. So because we, we are unable to get the optimal solutions. We. So meta heuristic may be used to provide this uh, op near to the optimal solution. What are the classification of the meta heuristic techniques are there? They are classified like here, like nature inspired versus non nature inspired, population based versus the single based, dynamic versus statistics, one single versus the various neighborhood, memory based, memoryless, nature inspired versus non nature inspired. And you can see both are the same thing. So let me explain what is the what is the category of there. So what is the nature inspired is which are inspired from the nature like genetic algorithm which are basically inspired from the genes of human beings are there. Similarly for the ant algorithms, ant algorithm is basically inspired from the behavior of the ants are there. While the non inspired algorithms are there like say taboo search which are basically on the physics backgrounds or the local search are there. As the name suggests on the population search and the single search. What is the population search is whenever you are trying to, for example, whenever you are trying to minimize this f of x, either you start x as a random number, you can start with a random number either as a single point or as a bunch of the points are there. If you consider as a bunch of the point, we will call as the population. If you start with a single point, we will call as the single point search. So like here, genetic algorithm is always with a base point because they use the set of the solutions are there. However, the working like taboo search and the uh, local search methods are basically on the single search algorithms. Dynamics as the name suggests in which the objective functions are changing or uh, changes with respect to them. However, these uh, statics means these are the constants are there. One single and the variable neighborhood means that's a topology you can use. One single neighborhood means you can use the uh, fitness landscape topology which are which is a constant value which is a constant are there while the variable means which are changes over the diversity of the problem. Memoryless that is a which one uh, searches for the search for the history whether they use the memory or not. So whenever they will preserve their memory we can see those algorithms are called as the memoryless or called as the Markov process. All of you know that what is the Markov process is if I say x condition y or you can say if whatever the value of this here is n plus or say m that is nothing but my memoryless is there that is n minus m is there. You can see the information they are exclusively used for define the next stage is dependent only on the current stage. They are not depending on the previous stages are there. Or once they are the memory, uh, memory algorithm they are of the two kinds one is the short and the second is the long term. Or what is the meaning of that? The first you use the recent performance when wherever you visit and the long is they can take back your or uh, they back all the previous solutions are there. The use of the memory is nowadays recognized as one of the fundamental elements of the heuristics. 
what are the three main direction in which you can think about on your research problems they are always here the first one is that you can improve the already existing method like say if there is a method of the pso you can improve them by changing their control parameter that's the direction one you can think about your research problem second is you can hybridize the two algorithms like of the pso you can hybridize them with the ga you can hybridize ga with the ant colony and so on that's a hybridize or otherwise you can introduce the new algorithms in in the related to these optimization techniques these nature inspired algorithms are basically categorized into the four ones one is based on the evolutionary swarm physics and the human speed what is the meaning of the evolutionary algorithm is which are inspired from the biology whatever the biologies are they like of the genetic and then so on what is the swarm based algorithm is they are basically inspired from the behaviors of the social in insects or the animals what is the physics are there they are inspired from the rules of the natural phenomena as the name suggested for the human they are inspired from the human beings there are the many algorithms which are falls under these each categories like of the evolutionary algorithms they are uh, genetic algorithm differential evolution and so on however for the swarm intelligence they are based on the particle swarm optimization ant colony and so on physics based algorithms like of this you can see also the gravitational search algorithms gsa and here and the human base are the tlbo searching based algorithms and also uh, uh, there are many more out there the complete nature inspired algorithm which fall under this category is evolutionary you can see the genetic differential bbo swarm intelligence is the aco pso mouth flame flower ba ss and so on while the human relatives are the passing vehicle search neural network sine cosine algorithm tlbo and 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 others are there the behaviors the popularity of these algorithm you can see they are increasing they are widely used by the various researchers along them so uh, this is all about the nature inspired algorithm brief idea about the nature inspired algorithms you can share this video if you like them thank you very much best of luck